Hey y'all. We'll see if we did this right. Gotta get this loaded into the machine here. Then we'll get this party started. Alright. There we go. Don't do that. Alright, there we are on. Uh, let me get seated here and we'll get the show started. I did make it. What's going on, everybody? Uh, first and foremost, I got to give a big, a big shout out here. You'll notice we're not wearing our normal clothing today. We're wearing some classic Willie whoop, and some K-State clothing. And that is because we want to give a big shout out, not that any of them watch, but <laughs> to the men's Kansas State basketball team for doing a couple things. One, uh, on a windmill dunk from Jada, we vanquished our long-term foes, those KU folks, and then we also took care of Baylor, putting us firmly in first place in the Big 12 and back in the top 25 ranking. So congratulations to Kansas State, to a job well done. Hopefully we keep it going, and that will be all of the sports talk today. But I wanted to get that in there, right? Uh, one thing I want to know is how many of you got the chance. To I'm kind of like a freak. I gotta have some candle sense going on to watch our zoo video. And if you did, what did you think of it in the virtual tour? Like, I really, really want to know your opinions on it. Um, it is something we've worked very long for, very hard on, and uh, you know, I, I definitely want to know what your thoughts are. And thank you, Danielle. And I'm glad you watched the bushcraft. So. And I'm glad you love the purple. Somebody said they had a question. Just shoot it out and ask. So, Corey, thank you. This was badass. I appreciate that. The rock work. The rock work is actually, uh, it's all concrete is what it really is. So, it's all hand-laid concrete that they put on there to make it look like rocks. So, it, it, it was really cool. And it took a long time for a builder to do that. So, I really appreciate their hard work, which was... Um, Actually done by Apex Exotics out of Kansas City is who the builder was. Thank you. Now, you guys got to see almost all the animals in there really quick. And uh, so I'm curious if you had any favorites that you'd like to see. Or if there's something you thought maybe we were lacking on or needed more of. One person uh, did suggest in the video maybe a little love for boas. And uh, I can understand that. And the email is just mattgambrell.hotmail.com for the PayPal. So... Uh, we, we used to, <laughs> when he wrote that, I looked and thought, shit, we don't have a single boa in there. <laughs> and you're right, Bubonic Plague, that's what it is. It is five bucks. So, Betting for the rats, I think they use something called like cowboy bedding or cowboy litter, and then they mix a little bit of cedar in there. So, But we can't catch you, Sasquatch. <laughs> well, we've seen one behind us, right? <laughs> What dinkers do we have? Uh, we've got the two pastel-like that just randomly popped out. And of course, we have our, our dark project, uh, which is this girl here, who we hope will, you know, prove out to be something. And she is just extremely, extremely dark uh, compared to other normals. Even on her belly, it looks like she's been stained in ink. So... And yes, Gaboon Viper. I agree with that statement. I also want a Rhino Viper. And we are working towards that goal. There are some licensing things we have to achieve to get there. So I'm, I'm working with our city to do that to allow us to get the things we don't currently have that we want. So we're definitely working on that. You know what, Eric? That's a good point. I didn't even think about that. But the Anaconda, it is a boa constrictor. So we do have at least a little love for the boas. That is, thank you. I feel better now. <laughs> How am I done with jeans? Some are, some are hard. And, you know, Jason, there for a while we were doing some videos and we kind of talked about getting back into them because, you know, it, it is a... So we're always looking for things to film. I mean, that's a, when you do this, that's a constant battle is what we want to film now. And, uh, oh, my niece is here. That's awesome. So, hi, Patience, and my little niece, Aurora, and little baby, Everly, who's too young to really watch me, but I'm glad you guys are there. And we started thinking about maybe doing some videos where we'd focus on one gene, but then focus on what it does in combos with it to show different things that we, we have and uh, some of the way to recognize that. That might help with what you're talking about. That's a bummer. Oh, she's sleeping. Everly really is. She's super cute. So, for an adult male, you know what? 
uh, Sam, that that depends. And I'll show you what I mean here. It gives me a chance to pick up this. So, typically, what I keep my adult males in would be something like these over here, which these are, you know, everything we run is tall grass racks, of course. These are all, what's up, Tristan Lambert? These are all FB40s, and you can see, you know, they're good. Well, nobody's living in that one. Somebody is, but he's out breeding. Now, this is about the biggest animal I have in there, right there. So, uh, and he could almost go on a bigger one. But I also have this male here, and the fact of the matter is, he is just too big to fit in. And the bigger of the two snakes there, the clown, is actually a male. And he's too big to fit in those FB40s. So he's in an FB70. So it just really makes a difference on, on the male itself. I have some breed size males that are in the FB, I guess they're 20s even. But those are my smaller males. And most of my plan on moving to FB40s as they grow. So typically FB40, but sometimes that's too small. So, And yes, uh, I'm going to misspell that for a not say that first name right. First of all, Daniel, I think a ball python is a great beginner snake. So is a corn. You know, I'd steer away from the huge ones, maybe a boa being the biggest one. As far as the desert females, yeah, from what I understand, they're going to go egg-bound and they're going to die. So that you don't want to breed those. Like, you got to just not breed the females. And the best way to pop, same way you do a baby, it's going to take more pressure. To learn it, you almost need to uh, have somebody show you on different size on different size animals. That will help you get that pressure right without you damaging the python. And what it helped for me, and I tried to recreate it in a video working with babies, was having them do it on my arm so I could feel the pressure. And being able to feel that pressure and have something to go by was a lot better than watching because you can't feel pressure when you watch. I don't uh, see why you couldn't, Michael, but your odds are long. So, you know, it's going to be long odds. But... Uh, yeah, it's possible. I mean, it's just like anything else. As far as a water monitor, maybe not the best monitor to start with. Uh, they can be a good pet, but I would say uh, probably if you really want to go monitor, Savannah is probably the best bet. And I think it's better to buy a rack, Joe, but I can't build for crap. If you're a good builder, I mean, I know people that have built their own and done just fine, so I'm not going to say it can't be done. But for me, uh, I prefer... To, to do these, I mean, just to buy them. I know they're right. I know their heat gun is good. I'm not relying on my crappy construction skills to keep the snake in. Everything goes really well. And I'm probably not the best person to help with turtles, C.J. Lewis. This is not my area of expertise. Where do I live? Uh, Kiss Constrictors, we live in Manhattan, Kansas, hence rocking the K-State today, right? And as far as that goes, uh, Job Van Eck, I don't know. I was really young. I mean, I know I was in grade school. Uh, I couldn't tell you an exact age because I, I, I don't I don't remember. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it just... But I've been into it for a very long time. And they are cold over here, but not too bad. So, I'm doing good, Jeremy. And uh, for all you, Jeremy is one of the guys I got to actually hand deliver snakes to. That was so awesome. I love hand delivering them. I love it way better than shipping. My most anticipated. Uh, oh, Aurora wants to see Artemis. All right, guys. Look, I love each and every one of you, but my great niece went. Uh, and since she's on and wants to see Artemis, I'm going to do that if I can. And I can. He's not breeding. So, for those of you that have watched this for a long time, occasionally my little great niece makes a cameo. Uh, and this is her favorite snake. And every time she's here, she always asks to see Artemis. And Artemis is a boy that we thought was a girl when we got her, but ended up being a boy. But this is Artemis here, and I've got pictures of her holding Artemis and everything else. And there's nothing more fun than getting my, uh, my nieces and nephews into snakes. And currently a lot of them actually have reptiles. I've got one that doesn't, just because of where she lives, they won't allow a reptile uh, in the apartments. But I'm sure... If she ends up outside of there one day, I will take care of 
take car take care of her along with her daughter as well but i did get them a cat because her apartment let them have a cat so they have a cat and then my other niece i got them a snake and then my brother and his kids all have a snake in florida that came from us but this is artemis which is her favorite snake so pretty cool right and i'm gonna put him back in because artemis has got a job to do and that is to make more pies come there buddy so he's actually in with Medusa right now, who is our pied female. Ugh. That sucks. Now, on that one that just talked about their uh, Savannah dying, the dehydration could be on them, but, I mean, we really can't control animals getting cancer. If it had cancer as terrible as that is, there's nothing that we can do as an animal keeper or breeder to really prevent that. Uh, it's just, and unfortunately it's going to happen. Just like in humans, I mean, there's a certain percentage that's just going to get that. And short of very expensive treatments, there's not a lot that can be done for it. Um, but it always sucks losing an animal. We've been there. You know, when we opened the zoo, when we were going to open the zoo, the expectation was that we'd have a pair of black throats. And um, unfortunately, due to some medical issues, the black throats passed away. Uh, you know, they'd gone to the vet, actually gone to a teaching hospital and everything else, and just I mean, even been overnight in ICU and they plummeted fast, and uh, nothing we could do different, you know, and that sucked. And so we had this big, huge cage with these two black throats that we now don't have. And uh, what they'd done is they'd eaten some of their own eggs and it blocked it up. Uh, so we now have a croc monitor in there, which is really cool, right? But uh, losing those other animals always hurts. It always, always sucks. And Victor, there may be, but not in the near future. Like Old Formel is not something we own right now. And we may get it at some point in time. I'm actually out uh, adding. So I was so, sorry, I almost said outlaw because I was reading the comment by uh, Tyler Outlaw. I'm glad your mom's a survivor. That's awesome. But. Um, yeah, depriving of water for six months is terrible, but, you know, uh, what do you mean, what have we done to our home, sad? Cancer isn't from something we've done. Cancer's been occurring in animals and populations since the beginning of time. So, well, Nick, it doesn't affect me. It's in Europe. That's how I feel about it. And I'm going to let Europe do what Europe does, and um, I'm going to let their, you know, <laughs> I'm going to do what I do in America. So I don't plan on doing any shows in Europe. <laughs> you know, So it, it doesn't affect me, and it's politics that I'm not involved in, and so I'm going to let them handle that over there, and I'll just handle my own shit over here, and it'll be fine. I would be upset if they banned it over here, and of course I'd be the one fighting against that. But we also have a different view on things here than European does. It's uh, And it is. Andrew's right. It's not a ban across the country. It's not that spiders are illegal to own in the country. I believe now there's two show companies that say no spiders. It's two of their largest shows. So, you know. Oh, did I say a bad word? Sorry. In my defense, I'm not supposed to cuss her. I'm a great niece. But I, I do every now and then. I actually taught her her first bad word. I got in trouble for that. But now we say, what the pickles? <laughs> she, she's around. <laughs> Can you see a spider? Sure. I'll show you a spider. Let me find one. Oh, I've got one. We've got some in here. Here. This is a young spider. This is a just a straight up spider. This is a young one. And it's doing just fine. Well, just because you never heard of it, I'm telling you it was still there. And uh, you know, cancer's always been around. Animals can get cancer just like people can. It's, you know, I mean, things that we do as human beings can certainly increase the chance of cancer. What I mean is if we're like, you know, smoking or radiation or things of that nature, but you could live a perfectly clean life in a perfect bubble and uh, still get cancer. So as far as champagne combos, I mean... Mostly what I, oh, I do have one. I can share one champagne combo. And that is this girl here. It's pretty sad when you got to think about what little snakes you have, right? So and that is just a champagne inchy, which brings out all of the pattern back to champagne, to champagnes, which is pretty neat. So 
If you're converting glass tanks to tubs, be prepared to have to do a lot less time in cleaning. That's what you need to do. Once you get it done, you're going to love it. I mean, that's just the fact of the matter. And as far as Kirk Cousins, I said I wouldn't do any more sports talk today after I brought Case states and let that one lie. And the start of breeding season for me is going, I think, fairly well. Here's a little fact about me. I'm always super nervous, right? And uh, I, I until those first eggs happen, and I'm super nervous again until those first eggs hatch. So right now I'm at that uh, internal worry phase, like well, what if nothing lays or what if nothing happens or what if this doesn't go well, you know, yada, yada, yada. However, we're already seeing some ovulation, so I'm sure it's going to be just fine. It's looking good. But I, I always, you know, have that feeling. So it, it's part of it but we're, we're looking good things are looking really good so you know it'll be much nicer and i unfortunately don't have leopard but that is something i do plan on correcting uh, start to finish we start in october usually right about halloween and then we finish whenever they're tired of pairing up so like right now i mean we'll see if anybody's actually breeding because i know i've got some pairings going on no lock there i didn't expect those to lock these I wouldn't expect to lock, and we're not locked, but we're pressing. These I would surprise me to see a lock, and not locked, but the male's pressing. Here, not only expect a lock, don't see one, don't expect to hear, don't see one. Some of these I think are kind of done. This one was already locked up, and I think we're finished. We are finished. So somebody asked to see Zeus. Here he is, doing really good. I'm going to go ahead and put him to his next job. Right there. Go get him, buddy. Go get him. See what else we got going on. Also, I just checked. That was not paired. No lock there. So I can say we're slowing down. I just checked that. No lock there. That's when I was hoping to find lock. These probably are not locked. Nope. And that's because... They're, I mean, we're kind of getting to the end of that cycle on a lot of these. There's a lock. We do still have some locks going on. You know, it just kind of, oh, I've already checked you. Kind of depends on what we're working with as far as who's doing what. But uh, we'll, we'll stop pairing when they lose interest, which is usually a few months from now. You know, and as far as the usual end, it just depends. I mean, I've had clutches as late as December, so... Yeah, I think it might make competitive lines of scaleless. As far as a good alternative, I don't know why you do it. And, and here's why I say that. Um, like, if I'm sitting there and I'm choosing to buy a scaleless head or a micro scale, and my goal is to ultimately make a scaleless snake, right? That's why I'm buying one of those, most likely. So if my goal is to make a scaleless snake, and I'm coming at it from that point of view only, okay, and I can buy a scaleless head or a micro scale, and the micro scale is way more expensive than the scaleless head, or why would I just buy the, the lower cost one to do the same result? I mean, it doesn't make any difference. Now, if you have a different reason for the micro scale, then that's okay. But at the end of the day, a scaleless is going to be a scaleless is going to be a scaleless. And I don't think it's going to make much of a difference on the price in that way so that's just my opinion so you know take it for what it's worth why was that brian's show which i'm not sure if that was for me or what show because i haven't been to a show in a long time unfortunately uh the zoo just opened in february 1st we've been trying to build it for about a year now it's part of our retail shop and the ownership situation is is this the uh, zoo is part of Manhattan Reptile World. So I own 25% of Manhattan Reptile World and 25% of the zoo. And camera guy Kurt owns 25% of Manhattan Reptile World and 25% of the zoo. And then there's two other owners uh, that each also own 25%. So, I mean, effectively, Olympus owns about half of that. Uh, but it isn't just us. We're Olympus. I personally own 50% of Olympus and Kurt owns the other 50%. And it's a true just two-person partnership. So it, that's kind of, I mean, how that works since you asked. I don't mind sharing. You know what? Uh, I, I think that's, Timothy, that's a good question. And 
I prefer my champagnes to be females, and, and here's why. I've kind of learned through trial and error. You know, I've got a lot of male spider. I got a lot of female spider. What's up, DA? And what tends to happen are is when I have a male, you know, I'm going to breed them to several snakes, and then I've got males and females both. So on spiders, I've got so much spider that, and I like spider. I'm not ripping spider at all, but like any gene that has some lethality, you know, I can't breed it together. So it kind of limits my pairings. And so with champagne, I decided, you know what, I'm only going to keep females. And that way I never have to worry about that with champagne. Now, obviously, I can't put spider to champagne either, so I'm still limited in that aspect. But by only keeping the females, you know, it, it's much easier. And then I also control how much would I produce. Um, and so I would recommend females on that. But you can go either way. This is just what works for me. And what works for me is not always the best for everybody. So. Uh, probably not this one because I I don't have anything to sell. That's the problem with that, Jeremy. Switch the mail. What do you mean switch the mail? If I switch the mail, then he's breeding multiple, and I'll have a lot of champagne coming. So I wanted to one sex, and that way I could get, like, you know, males that have, you know, multiple genes I want that I want to go to everything. I could put it to champagne and put it to something else and pass all those genes along. For example, my, you know, pinstripe uh, pastel scaleless head. He is actually breeding one of my champagne girls this year. If I can find her, here she is. Come here, baby girl. Oh, I know. You just angry at the world. Ugh. He's breeding this big old girl. You know, and I couldn't put... Oh, looky, looky, looky. That's a... Looking good. I think you're going to see her start swelling back up. I think you did finish your ovulation. That's awesome. Pretty sure that did. So I do need to uh, fire up the old incubator. Woo! That'd be scaleless head champagnes. That would make my day. I don't have, but I do have something really black, Tom, or really dark. We are working towards cinnamon. Black, actually, it'll be a super black pastel banana. But for dark right now, what I have is this, which this is, of course, our Suma male. And he is going to be the key to going very, very dark with other genes. So I'm really looking forward to that and uh, should be pretty cool on, on what we do. The swelling looks like it ate a football, which is pretty typical. We've got about, you know, four or five that now have done that. So we do need to fire the incubator. I expect some of our first clutches to be the champagne. Uh, the exanthic clutch may come early this year, one of them. And then also we may end up with some early Mojave clutches, which would be really cool. So it's going well. I mean, she's thick, uh, very, th very, very thick. So, and she's showing tons of signs, but she did eat this week. A lot of them eat that week, but I have found that they'll stop eating. Then you'll get like that one meal in them. Boom. And then they'll stop again, and then it's go time. So that happens a lot. Uh, NDA, somebody actually asked that earlier, and I think it sucks. You know, It's only at a few shows, but I still think it sucks. But I don't really worry much about it because it's in Europe and I'm in the United States. And I can't control what they do. Uh, all I can do is be vocal for what we do over here on this side of the pond. And... I mean, there's probably a reason we fought a war for independence over there. What they is to have more freedoms. Uh, apparently, that's freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom to not be taxed on damn tea, which we now are taxed on tea, and freedom to breed spider ball pythons. So, on champagne orange dream mix, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. You know, Cronus uh, needs some camera time. He does, but there's some plans in the work there where you'll see a lot more stuff coming in. And Blitz Calico Spider, I haven't done that either, but uh, with Blitz, I love my Blitz. But Blitz is one of the genes I don't really like with Spider. I think the Spider kind of overpowers it. You don't give as much of a look. Oh. Sure, I can show you your snake, Tim. Not a problem. As far as when I think shipping will be good, uh, it was snowing today, so not today. <laughs> That's a terrible thing to say. Uh, we're probably looking at March right now. It's been kind of a cold winter, but there it is. This is 18101. Let me get some of its white to pop out. There you go. Now you can only really kind of see some of the pretty colors on that. Just a beautiful little pied. 
and I have seen the lavender champagne stuff, and it's awesome. Oh, no, I'm sorry, the lavender champagne? No, I'm thinking about lavender albino. I haven't seen lavender champagne stuff, so that's new for me, too. <laughs> sorry, there's so many things that come in, I kind of miss them. All right, guys, we're just going to do a few more minutes, and then we're going to have to hop up off of here because it is time for me to go to Patreon then. And Erin is doing fine. She is still at work, so that sucks for her. Weirdest colored snake I have. Well, I would have to say, and it's going to be shocking when you guys see this. Of course you're in ship. Let me try this one. You're not in ship. It's this. This is the weirdest colored snake I think I have. And it's not going to be that weird. Okay? And you're going to think, gee whiz, Matt, you pulled out a pastel. That's great. But the pairing that made it had no pastel or had any, had never had pastel in it. So uh, kind of shocking, you know, to, to make that. So I'd say that's kind of the weirdest. And I saw you met Eris. Eris is doing good. She's hit breed size this year. So we're working on breeding her. And she is in glow. So if you want to see an example of glow, this is a good example. And uh, we'll see how she looks here. If it picks up, you can almost see all those purpley hues coming out. It looks really, really nice. And she is being bred to a lesser pastel. Let's see if you can see any swelling on her. And you can see just a little swelling, not a full ovulation in or anything. But some building. Go on in there. So I'm really excited and hopeful she will actually have babies for us this year in her first year of breeding. Uh, that would just be kind of a big wow for us because she might actually be a calico. So I really want to prove out that calico. So that's what we're hoping for. Black pastel. Oh, I missed something. I think about black. I think it'd be cool. I mean, I don't know what all you'd get on there. <laughs> It'd be a lot, a lot of combos with that. But I love black pastel with banana or, you know, love that. Exantic babies this year, we will have some, hopefully. I always say hopefully. I don't ever count a snake egg till they're out. But we are pairing, you know, Zeus to uh, our pastel head exantic and Zeus to a pastel exantic. We are then repeating our snow clutch and our true ghost clutch again this year. So if all of that goes, you know, we have quite a few shots at something exantic. So I'm really, really hoping. And, uh... Well, I'm glad you caught us, Taylor Maine. Uh, that's pretty awesome. We won't be on too much longer. Sorry, but you did catch us. Yeah, black pastel and albino do wonderful together. So I imagine the lavender albino would just be off the hook, too. You know, we end up with Tofino to get that lavender color is how we're going. And we're trying to make Tofinos this year. So if you're looking for some lavender color, well, we won't have lavender albinos. We will have Tofinos, which are a, you know, heterozygous toffee, heterozygous albino, but they're a lelic, so it makes a visual animal. We do have clowns. I have one male clown I showed earlier who is massive, and then we have a female spider clown. I guess I could show her. What's the difference between Zeus and Hades? One pastel gene. That is the difference between Zeus and Hades. One single pastel gene. dun 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 da She thinks I'm feeding her. dun dun But I'm not feeding her. She just ate. <laughs> that is our spider clown. And somebody I saw asked if the Kalitz is breeding. Yes, she is breeding. We will see if it takes this year. Uh, she just hit size this year. So we will, I don't know, I won't know if it works. But uh, she's been bred to our black pastel banana. It's also his first year. And I'm really hoping he proves out because he's got a lot of girlfriends. So I really kind of need him to get the job done. But uh, I have seen him locking a lot. So... You know, unless there's a problem with him, I expect a lot of that stuff to be coming on. I saw a new video came out on the Pompeii. It said, like, Pompeii Secrets Revealed, but I honestly haven't had time to watch it. So I don't have any thoughts on it, really, you know, uh, at all. It's because I haven't seen it, so. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, pastels will give you a green tint to the eyes. So they'll commonly have green eyes. I mean, green, blue, and... You can also do red or pink by adding anything with albino in it. And so there's some things you can you can do. Well, what all is in it, Scott? Because I haven't had a chance to watch it. And truth be told, I probably won't get a chance because my calendar, I have a free day in March. 
that's kind of how it looks. Red stripe, spot nose, yellow belly, clown. Hmm. Cool. Uh, my largest snake is, oh yeah, pink. That You can kind of get a pinkish reddish eye by using your albino stuff. Um, it's probably, I mean, we've, we've pushed them over 3,000 grams before. They're all kind of breeding or not eating. I'm letting a lot of them sit right now. So, you know, if I pull all of them out. Trouser, I mean, I showed him earlier. It's my big male clown. He's over 3,000 grams, I do believe. This girl often has a good weight to her. Let's see, where is the other one? Where did you go? There you are. She frequently has a good weight to her. Oh, right there's a big, big ball python. But uh, take a look at her. And you can kind of start to see a swell in her right through here. But it's not an ovulation yet. But we're building. Or we're swelling back up post-ovulation. That's possible. I can't remember who's all ovulating who has. And it'll be a surprise in here this year a lot of the year. So for a six-year female, man, it's all over the map. It, it, it's just, you know, I mean... You're, it's hard to say, you know, like at six years old, they should be this. They're an adult at six years old, right? And uh, so they could range anywhere from about 1,700 for a female up to 4,000 grams. But uh, I'm not doing any banana pies. And yes, we've had a lot of snakes stop feeding. I just pulled out a big one. I just did. It's like 3,000 grams. I just, I just, just did that, Tom. <laughs> All right, guys. We've been at this for about a half hour. Oh, let me get that first because I do want to. That's a great question. And then I'm going to have to get off of here and slide over to Patreon. And what that is, uh, I do my sales, Michael, over Patreon is where most of them all go. The question I want to address is from, uh, from Shady, and it says, What did you feed Sobek as a hatchling, and was he a picky at first? He was very picky at first. And so what I eventually got him to feed on was goldfish. And goldfish are not the best food for caiman. I had tried uh, a little bit of everything, including the commercial food, and he wasn't having it. But goldfish are, are, you don't want them on an exclusive diet of goldfish. They can have a little bit of fish in the carp family, and a little bit every now and then they ain't going to hurt them. But on an exclusive diet of goldfish, they're going to have health problems. So I needed to get him feeding, and that was what worked. So for a few weeks, that, that was what he was on. And then what worked, was I was able to take a rat pink, a pre kill I think it was. I set it on his little shelf in his first little cage, and I ran a GoPro above so I could go and I could watch on my phone. And I watched him on my phone where I was out of sight come and get that pinky. So what I realized is it was, it was me. It was He was still nervous around people uh, and being around people. And he still is. So, like, if I'm feeding him, it's me and Kurt. He don't care. He'll eat anything in front of us. But if I have other people here that want to see him feed, it's hit and miss because he's a little shy. Uh, but now he eats, you know, like last week he ate a large rat, uh, that's, which is a big meal for him. I probably was a little bit too big, but what happened is one of our snakes had killed it, but then didn't eat it because it, it's getting to that point where it's not really eating well, but it still thinks it's hungry. And so I didn't want to waste it, so I took it, gave it to him. And so, you know, that anti-wasting. All right, guys, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Right, that was the thing, Andrew. There's no decent nutrition there. I mean, they've got meat and bone and calcium in them, but there's a, a protein in them that's actually really bad for them. They can cause them issues. So you, you don't want that to be their main source. But uh, got to get them eating. And now he eats like 90% rat and a little bit of chicken. And when they get him into his new place that he's moving into, we'll probably try to put some perch and things in there for him to snack on. So, uh I've never bought rats from Perfect Prey, but I'm sure they're fine. All right, guys, thanks for watching very, very much, and I will see you all next time.